So in the last video, we learned how to compose functions. We learned the notation can be written in two separate ways, f of g, where the of is defined as this little circle here, or actually writing it like we see it, an f of g of x. We did quite a few examples of substituting in or composing functions, two of them where we substituted in numbers, and two of them where we just left it as x, and we found the domain from there. Okay, now, like I said in the last video where I ended it, instead of composing functions, something else we might want to get used to is decomposing functions. So in the last video we put these guys together, now we want to separate them back out. So they give us a function here, h of x is the absolute value of 2x squared minus 5, and we want to figure out two separate functions where if we were to compose these two functions, it would end up as our function defined there. So we want f of g of x such that if we defined g of x in such a way, and we define f of x in such a way, that we would end up with this expression up here. Now, the easiest way for me to think about this, or for me to explain this as you, is I, the way I've written it here. Notice my g of x looks like it is inside my f of x function. So that's the way I suggest that you think about it, is I want you to pick out an inside piece of my yellow expression up here, absolute value of 2x squared minus 5. And then whatever's left over will be your outside piece. So your inside piece is going to be defined as g of x, and then your leftovers or your outside piece is going to be defined as f of x, such that if we were to take f of g of x and simplify it, we would be left of the absolute value of 2x squared minus 5. I suggest that you try and come up with your g of x and f of x on your own, and then double check it by composing it and see if it does simplify to be our h of x function as defined there. When we come back, I'll give you an example or two of how this can be defined. And they are not unique. So if you came up with one answer and I came up with a separate answer, that's not saying that mine is right and yours is wrong or vice versa. There is more than one answer to these type of problems here. So see what you can come up with to compose these and get our h of x function. Okay, so again, I like to think of it as an inside piece and an outside piece. So when I see inside, I think of inside the absolute values. So the most obvious inside piece, or g of x as we've defined it here, would be 2x squared minus 5. That's what I have on my inside. Okay, if I taken that out, that means what do I have left over then? So really all I have left over is my absolute value. But I can't have an empty absolute value here, so I have to define it as a variable of something. Well, I know my variable is x, so I'm going to define it as just the absolute value of x. So that's going to give me my f of x function. So if I were to compose these f of g of x or f of g of x, basically you take your g of x function and you substitute it in for your x and your f of x function. If you would do that, would you be left with this yellow defined expression up here? And the answer would be yes. We would be left with the absolute value, substituting this in, of 2x squared minus 5. And so that gives us our h of x function. So this is the most obvious way to define f and g, but this is not the only way. So these answers are not unique. Another simplified way that we could do this is to find the g of x as maybe just the 2x squared. And then our leftovers from that f of x function would be the absolute value of something minus 5, because we took out the 2x squared. Well, when we take out something, we have to replace it with our variable. And in this expression, our variable is x. So if I wanted to find f of g of x in this way I've defined it, I take my 
g of x, and I substitute it in for my x and my f of x. And that would give me the absolute value of 2x squared minus 5, which is what we wanted it to be. So you can see I have two different examples here of how we can decompose this function, and they are both okay. So you can actually do this in quite a few different ways. You just need to figure out what you want to define as your inside piece, your g of x, and what's left over as your outside piece, or just your f of x. All right, now that we've decomposed it, let's go back and actually start recomposing things. And we're going to do algebra functions here. So we're going to find the difference quotient, and I'll explain that here in a minute. But we're actually combining our two techniques so far in this section. We're combining the algebra of functions, where we add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions, as well as composing functions. So in part A, we want to find f of x plus h, hence a composition of functions, where we take our x plus h and we substitute it in for all of our x variables. That gives me 3 times x plus h squared minus 5. And we want to simplify it. So let's FOIL out our x plus h because we know that we cannot distribute the square when our operation on the inside is addition or subtraction. So first, that gives me x times x or x squared. Outside gives me an x times h. Inside gives me an x times h. So together, that gives me two of those x times h's. And last, h times h is h squared. So let me distribute my 3, gives me 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 5. So that is an example of composition of functions. Now, in part B, we want to find the difference quotient, which is what's defined here, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So this is an example of the algebra of functions, when I want to subtract two different functions. Now, what is the difference quotient exactly? Well, this is a calculus tool. So if you can figure out how to do this in college algebra, that's going to make your life a lot easier when you move on to calculus. So this is in preparation for calculus. Okay, so all I need to do is substitute these in. So I'm going to take this f of x plus h and substitute it in for this function here. I'm going to take my original function, 3x squared minus 5, and substitute it in for f of x, because that is my original function. And then I'm going to divide it by h. So my yellow piece, 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 5. And I'm subtracting my blue piece, which is 3x squared minus 5. And that is all over h. Now, I've actually made a mistake at this part here. And I hope you can find it. I hope you are yelling at me at home saying, nope, that's not right. Remember, when you substitute in these pieces, my yellow piece and my blue piece, I always suggested when you're doing that to substitute them in with parentheses. The parentheses around the yellow piece does not have any effect on it, so you could have left that off and it wouldn't have hurt you. But the parentheses around the blue piece is very important. That's to tell you that this subtraction here goes to every piece back there. So if I were to distribute that, that would give me a minus 3x squared, which you probably had, but a plus 5. Negative times negative gives me positive 5, and that is all over h. Now, the reason that it's so important that you distribute that negative is because then this positive 5 should cancel out with that negative 5. Not to mention my positive 3x squared cancels out with my negative 3x squared there. So what I have left at this point is a 6xh plus 3h squared all over h. So that's what we have at this time for the difference quotient, but you need to ask yourself is can I simplify it any farther? And the answer is yes. 
All of our terms have H's involved, so we can factor an H out of the numerator, gives me 6x plus 3h, and we can then cancel that H with the denominator. We can only cancel when things are in multiplied form, so now this is H times this, so my H divided by H cancels out, and so my difference quotient answer leaves me with 6x plus 3h. So we started with a large, very messy fraction or very messy problem, but the wonderful thing about difference quotients is most everything ends up canceling out, and so we end up with a very nice answer down there, 6x plus 3h. So if you can handle this, that means you are ready to move on to calculus, and this is the perfect time to end our composition of functions.